please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Nifty is holding with good gains, 10,500 on the Nifty, holding strong with a half a century gain. But let's pull up the European markets. Let's see what those markets have opened up, whether in fact there is a bit of a green take just to kickstart trade. Well, it's a mixed start. The DAX, yesterday it was a big outperformer. It ended with a gain of closer to a percent. Today it's building on those gains, sitting with a gain of around three tenths of a percent. The FTSE yesterday as well, it was a relative underperformer. Today as well, a mild downtick is what we're seeing on that one, as flat as can be. No real worries coming in from the European markets. But uh, let's get back to our own markets and let's find out whether or not there's a trade on the Nifty as well as the Nifty Bank. Ashwini Gujral and Prakash Kaba are with us on this Friday afternoon. Ashwini, coming across to you, uh, your take on the Nifty. Is there a trade if someone's holding a long position? Do they push their stop loss uh, a tad bit higher? See, we just had a 30, 40 point dip on Bank Nifty as well as uh, some dip you know, 10, 12 point dip on the Nifty. I think th this is a place to buy into uh, both these indices because it's clear that uh, short covering is taking the markets higher. And if you see all these PSU banks, most of them are up two and a half, three uh, percent. So it's uh, clear that uh, financials will see uh, short covering. So as long as broadly 10,000, uh, 500 holds on, I think uh, you should remain bullish. And uh, now, uh, you know, even the IT sector is coming back strongly. So my sense is that we should close uh, higher from here rather than lower. So uh, the idea is to buy right now and uh, see if we can get a higher closing. As far as uh, stock calls are concerned, uh, uh, Bank of India is a buy with a stop of 108, target of 120. JSPL is a buy with a stop of 248, target of 262. And Dalmia Bharat is a buy with a stop of 2800, target of 2950. Okay. Uh, Prakash, um, your thoughts on the Nifty? How would you, you know, you know, position yourself for the second half of the trading session and your trades? Well, the trend basically is still intact up, has not been compromised. What I think is we need to move our stops a bit higher. I would have a stop somewhere closer to 10,490 or so and trade long. For the day, perhaps, it's the good place to profit. Perhaps we could see a dip here. But on the larger term time scale, I still feel the Nifty is still looking stretched. It can go up higher as well, but as it keeps going higher, it gets stretched. The target technical targets are 10,562. I think it can go there. So far, the trend is still up. So is the case with Bank Nifty. It's seen a very good resistance around the 25,400 marks. Perhaps we can see a dip to around 25,300 zones where we could see some kind of buy emerging. Looks like that's the place. Some profit booking is coming in Bank Nifty as well. I have two stocks. Moil is a buy. It can climb to levels closer to 225 zones, stop below 210. And Whirlpool is another stock that's looking good. Possible target on the upside is around 1600 zones, stop below 1540. Supreme Court earlier today has disallowed an out-of-court settlement for Benani Cement, setting a precedent for IBC. Ashmit Kumar, our colleague, is now in conversation with Mahindra Singhi, the group's CEO and whole time director of Dalmia Bharat Cement, who could be tipped to win right. the Benani uh, very Cement. Very good afternoon, sir. I'm glad that you can spare time and uh, speak to us. It's a big day today for you. The Supreme Court has given you that much-needed relief. Uh, the Supreme Court uh, stubbing out any track two processes. It's made clear that no out-of-court settlement as of right now. First reactions, first thoughts at this order coming in with the apex court clearing the way that only the h1 bidder will stand the track to process shall not be allowed happy afternoon everyone uh, it's a matter of great pride for us that through over this case of uh, rajputana dalmia bharat group and uh, binani we could get message from supreme court the highest body of law that uh, in IBC, nothing else can be done except in the process of law. No process would be terminated and the resolution process will take place. We are very happy that the Supreme Court immediately uh, suggested that uh, H1 bidder has to be considered and uh, loser bidder or the defaulting promoter, they cannot be considered. So we now feel very happy that our efforts, our uh, conviction, all have been Fair proven enough. good and proven right with the support of uh, all our team members, with the support of our councils, and most important is with the uh, support of the Supreme Court and the law. Fair enough. Uh, so let me ask you a question. Let me play the devil's advocate here. The yeah. Apex Court, in strictly speaking, hasn't quite dismissed, but it's allowed them liberty to withdraw. 
The concern, the question that I have to ask you is that their councils are clearly of the opinion that they can now raise this issue not here before the Supreme Court but before the NCLAT. The question being, are you anticipating more trouble, more discussions, more litigation as far as Track 2 is concerned? Uh, you refer to devil's advocate. I, I don't know why you refer to that. But, you know, uh, we all are advocates of right law, right process. And now we expect this the way Supreme Court judges have commented. Now the uh, process should be very smooth. Now, whether it's the Binani Industries or any other bidder, they would not interfere because they would also like to respect the law. They would also like that, yes, the asset which is under stress should be resolved. They are also very uh, reputed corporate citizens, so they would also see that how they can improve the image of the country, image of the law, and a asset which is troubling so many people, so, so many stakeholders. And once a corporate uh, uh, personality uh, in the way of Dalmia Bharat Group has come forward, so how to give them the message that now this is, asset would be resolved, and it will also create confidence in various investors that the NPAs, which are to the tune of maybe more than four or five lakh crores, they will also get faster resolution. Fair enough. So one final question here. This one, as far as the road forward is concerned, the operational creditors are not very happy with your offer. Uh, can we anticipate, are, are we completely ruling out perhaps uh, greater discussions with the COC where perhaps the offer in, uh, in a manner of speaking can be sweetened uh, to accommodate the interest? Is that something that's on the table or can be ruled out? Uh, since resolution plan has already not been made public, so we have not been able to highlight that how uh, fair we have been in giving money to all the uh, all the operational creditors. So like uh, we have paid 100% in our plan to more than 98% of the operational creditors whose liability, whose uh, outstanding was less than one crore. Even the operational creditors who are more than uh, one crore or more than 10 crores, different resolution has been uh, worked out. Region being that there may be many related party uh, creditors, there may be uh, tainted uh, operational creditors, but then definitely we are here to resolve the issue. We are not here to complicate the issues. Uh, I think the uh, whole media must have seen also the way we have been advocating hmm. about the law, about IBC, about our honest intentions. Fair enough, sir. We really wish you the best of luck and it's Thank been you. great speaking to you. Thank you so much, sir. All right, Mr. Singhi, they're sounding confident. He's expecting the IBC process to be smooth from year on. He's saying that, in fact, if it go went against them, then, in fact, you know, there would be no faith role in the IBC. Rima, I just uh, want to share, you know, I've been tracking this cement sector yeah. for the last uh, half a decade, a little more than that. Mr. Singhi is a very important part of this bid. Why? Because he was the one who grew Sri Cement's capacity uh, when they were, uh, you know, when they were hiking their capacity, particularly in Rajasthan. So the street and the, all the sell side analysts in terms of cement, they look at him as the master of the Rajasthan market. Mm. So he's going to be very, very important in, in uh, you know, ramping up this Binani cement plant in seeing how exactly they can get a foothold over there, how can they can ramp it up, the beta numbers, the pricing, everything. He's known as the master there. So we'll have to wait by. But more importantly, now the street is start focusing on how much is Dalmia Bharat bid? What's the bid? Is it 6,500, 6,700? What is their percentage in that consortium? That's mm. going to be important as well going ahead. And what does it take this, their debt to? Because some part of the street, they believe that maybe, in fact, Dalmia Bharat have been too aggressive. They've grown, you know, well till now. But that's why, in fact, intraday, you know, you see the stock has come up the high point of the day. So a lot of questions still un unanswered for the time being. What we know is that Dalmia Bharat, yes, Binani Cement is going to be their baby. All eyes are on Infosys, but for the time being, pull up TCS. That stock suddenly has spiked to the high point of the day. Just take a look at that. Rima was just telling me the stock has gained between 8 to around 9% just in the past week. So at some point of time, that stock should be up for you on the screen. There it is. But uh, we'll shift focus away from equities now. We'll focus on some commodities. Himanshu Gupta joins us to give us his commodity trading strategies. Himanshu, hi. Tell us, what do you have for us? Hi, good morning. morning. Uh, well, we believe gold prices are looking strong. Uh, we have seen some profit booking in yesterday's trade, but all in all, the geopolitical worries, these global trade war worries, are supportive for gold. And we believe that the prices are, would be trading firm in the immediate short term. Uh, so from a trading perspective, we believe 30,850 on the June month contract at NCX is a level to go fresh long and for the targets of 31,200. And the stop loss below 30,750 will be recommended in gold. 
Uh, the second strategy would be on the crude oil. Uh, well, the Middle East tensions are supporting uh, crude oil prices. At the same time, there is a strong demand and then global inventories are seen coming down. So all these factors, all these factors are actually supporting gold uh, crude prices in the immediate short term. Uh, we believe in the international markets, the WTI uh, remains broadly supported and 64, 64 and a half uh, would be a level where again fresh long stretch buying can be seen. <clears throat> so from a trading perspective on the MCX in the April month contract, uh, one can go long around 4320 for the targets of 4400 and a stop loss below 4280 would be recommended. Okay, and zinc? Uh, well, zinc is a counter that is witnessing some selling pressure. We have seen nearly 4% decline coming in yesterday. Today also we believe there can be some short-term pressure seen in the metal. So from a trading perspective for the day, we believe one can go short around 204.50 uh, for the targets of 200 to 198 in the intraday. And the stop loss above 206.50 would be recommended. Uh, but from a positional perspective, we believe these are the uh, good levels and we can see some low, uh, some buying coming in from lower levels. So these selling recommendation is just from an intraday perspective. Well, by, from a uh, medium to short-term perspective, one can go long and start accumulating at lower levels.